Today we are making waffles, something that has become one of my favorite breakfasts. And of course, we're using 100% freshly milled wheat. Hey y'all, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia and on this channel, we talk all about real whole grains from a biblical perspective. Now, forever long ago at the beginning of this channel, I shared um, my pancake recipe and I've been waiting to do a waffle recipe for you guys, but the biggest thing is I didn't actually have a waffle maker, but now I do and I'm super excited about it. Um, my biggest thing is finding a waffle maker that could actually accommodate my larger family. And so thankfully, I actually got my hands on this waffle maker, which is a Cuisine Art double waffle maker. So it actually cooks two very large Belgian waffles at the same time. Sweet. So I'm able to crank these bad boys out pretty quickly and I would say because of a waffle maker this is actually much easier than pancakes. So first of all I'm going to show you of course how to make it and good news if you already have my pancake recipe you pretty much have the waffle recipe because there's only one minor change in the recipe to make waffles. As always there is a printable recipe for y'all um, that is in the description box below or just go to my website grainsandgrit.com slash recipes to be able to find all my recipes that I do have. And I will also be including all the things that I use um, mentioned in this video as well in the description box below. Now before we get started um, to share with you where I got my double waffle maker. I actually got it from Pleasant Hill Grain. Um, another reason why I love that company so much is because they have so many cool gadgets and appliances that anytime I need something, they probably have it. Um, from your grain mills to your mixers to the waffle makers, and they do have different varieties, including single ones as well. So I love Pleasant Hill Grain because for a kitchen gadget lover like me, they, they definitely have a lot to keep me and my money entertained. <laughs> so to shop at Pleasant Hill Grain, all you got to do is just go to grainsandgrit.com slash PHG. And thank you so much, as always, to Pleasant Hill Grain for being a sponsor for Grains and Grit. So on to the waffle recipe. Now I'm going to be using my Bosch Universal Mixer Plus because I'm feeling lazy today and it's easier to record. But do know this is a quick bread recipe. All you need is a bowl and a whisk really to do this. You don't need any fancy equipment other than some way to make a waffle. Um, and so, but I'm just using my mixer for today. I do use the whisk attachments. So I already have those ready to go in my Bosch. Again, you can just use a bowl and a whisk. Now real quick on the type of wheat berries that I like to use with waffles, like my pancakes, um, you know, there's just a different variety that you can use. You can use hard red, you can use hard white, you can use soft white, you can use spelt. Feel free to experiment with a combination. Feel free to experiment with other grains like possibly kamu. I mean, there's, there's really, a, um, the sky is kind of the limit almost, um, as far as which grains to use for this. But for this recipe, do know it is for wheat. So if you're going with a, you know, a gluten free type flour, um, not really sure how that would work. Feel free to try it, but just do know I do stick within the wheat kind when it comes to this recipe. Today, I'm actually going to be using hard white wheat, which is delicious. Um, if you're starting off trying to convert people to freshly milled grains, I would stick with a soft white wheat or a hard white wheat. They are the milder flavors. But like with my pancakes, spelt has become a favorite wheat to use here as well. But sticking with hard white today. First up, what we need is freshly milled flour. You just need it to be milled fine like you do for bread and we just need three cups and then we need one teaspoon of salt i like using redmond's real salt and i do have a coupon code for you guys below one teaspoon baking soda two and a half teaspoons of baking powder we just add the dry ingredients first and then i like to give them a good mix now we add our wet ingredients now here's the difference between pancakes and waffles with my pancake recipe it called for a third cup of oil with waffles we need to increase that to half a cup of oil and i actually generally like to use peanut oil if you use an olive oil make sure you're going with um a not so extra virgin olive oil because that flavor will go into the waffles. Stick with a milder oil. So that's half a cup of oil. 
And then we have four eggs. We also have cultured buttermilk, but I don't like to add that just yet. I like to add that gradually. So with the eggs and the oil in, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing this up. And while mixing this up, I'm gonna slowly be adding my cultured buttermilk until it gets to the consistency that you expect um, for a pancake batter, waffle type batter. Um, so it's similar to a cake batter where it's not super runny, but it's also not really thick because when we put it in our waffle maker, it needs to spread out to fill in the waffles, which the waffle irons, which we will see in a bit. So it does call for anywhere from three to four cups of cultured buttermilk. It may be more, it may be less. You just have to watch it because again, with fresh milled wheat, this will depend on the day. It also will depend on the type of wheat that you were using as well. So let's start mixing this up. That is looking pretty good. So you can see here, it will run off a spatula, but not crazy runoff. All right. And so I do like to make sure that everything is scraped down. Everything is looking smooth with your batter. Scrape the sides. Now, while this is going on, if you're using, um, well, you will have to use a waffle iron, but have it go ahead and be heating up. Let's go ahead and talk about um, this waffle iron really quick. When heating up, all you have to do with this one is it is, um, it is an electric one. So I do need to make sure that I just spray both of these just once right before I start making. I don't, I find that I don't need to spray it again. I just do a little bit of a spray with some oil to start with. And then what I find to have it on is about the four setting. Um, this gets me a nice brown waffle, but not super toasty, um, but also not super light where it's not that crispiness. You know, waffles tend to need a little bit of crisp, but yet still soft, kind of that sweet spot. So again, um, depending on your waffle maker, You'll have to figure out where you like it, just like you have to figure out with toast on the toaster where you like that to be as well. So I'm going to remove this and wait for this to turn on and we're going to start making some waffles. And I'm also going to share with you um, what to do if you want to make um, some of this in advance as well. All right, so before actually making these waffles while they're warming up, here are some little lessons that I've learned about waffles. One is you definitely want to make them fresh and immediately serve them. Um, I have done a huge batch before, but I kept them warm, warm in my oven. Um, but yet it softened the waffles and made them a bit soggy. So what I do now is basically when we're having waffles in the morning, it is cafeteria style, deli style in a way where I'm making the waffles, I'm pulling them out, I'm immediately buttering them and then serving them to people at the table. Um, and then they can add on syrup or whatever it is that they are wanting. And I find that this is the best way to have the best tasting, the best texture of waffles. So if you have a large family like me, that is how I recommend it. And good news, the great thing about waffles is it's easily sectioned off. So if you've got a lot of kids that are not wanting to necessarily wait a few minutes while their siblings are eating, go ahead and just cut up the waffles into sections and then serve them in sections. And so by the time as you're making them, they can be still eating and enjoying themselves. And that beeping means that my waffle iron is heated up. <laughs> um, another thing is with the batter that I have made, the amount of batter, um, it's maybe too much, especially if you were just a family of one or two. And this waffle maker, these make large, thick waffles, as you will see. For me, I really only eat one. Um, other people in my family eat one to two, Pro probably would eat more if I allowed them, but I usually start cutting them off. <laughs> this is with freshly milled wheat. It will be more filling. Um, so just know that with the batter, of course you can cut it in half if you don't even just wanna make as much. Um, and also what I sometimes do and what I will be doing today is I make it the night before um, and I store it in like a mason jar or some sort of container, put it in my fridge so I already have the batter ready to go the next morning. I have not any, I have never frozen any waffles, nor have I frozen any batter. So I'm not sure how that would work, but feel free to try it and let us know in the comments below how that works. 
But as far as making the batter the night before or keeping it in the fridge for a couple of days, it does work. Just know that you will see some oxidation at the very top. The very top will start looking a little grayish. I know that sounds a little wonky, but it's just oxidation. So before you start to make your waffles, just whip up that batter to mix everything all in and make sure nothing has settled. Let's check out this really awesome waffle maker. Again, they do sell these in singles, large family. I need the doubles. And one thing is it does come with this perfect little scoop, which is the perfect size amount or amount of batter that you need for the iron. Um, so for me, I've already greased it. So how it works with this one is I just open it up. This does get a little messy. So I do um, recommend you have a little plate to put everything on. So I just scoop out some of the batter Kind of make it as even as possible and then pour it around and then I use this to kind of just gently kind of spread it around put it on a plate and then for me I turn and then I add the next one and you don't want to overfill these because they will start overflowing and that gets a little interesting. All right. And then here, even though this is the newest one, I still turn it over and basically it just starts beeping whenever they are done. So we're going to wait around for a bit. Whenever this beeps and is done, I'll then plate it for y'all. Right, so it has beeped and for this waffle maker, the green light comes on and that tells me that this one's done. So I just take a plate, take a fork, carefully pull it off here. And voila, apparently I didn't add as much batter on there as I thought. Um, and then I like to either put a new piece, um, start making another batch here that I immediately do. And then I also just immediately start buttering that waffle. And you can feel with the waffle if you have, you know, if you need to up it, you need to lower the temperature to get it how you like. But this is one waffle and as you can see waffles they're wonderful easily able to separate into quadrants and start feeding to people and set that one and i know this one is almost done now usually i would keep going until all, all of this is done today for the video i'm only doing two waffles to show you guys um and then my the rest of my family is all drooling for a taste of waffles for a snack so that means that one's done. So all I do is just rotate this, open it up, and we've got another one. Seriously, this is like the coolest thing ever. Whenever I first got this waffle maker, I did waffles a lot because it was just, it was fun to use this. And I find myself, it's way more relaxing than pancakes because um, I can be working on other things while it's cooking. I don't have to flip anything. I don't, don't have to do anything. So I felt it was more relaxed and not as frantic with the pancakes um having this handy dandy waffle maker okay so here we go again i'm just cutting them up into quadrants but they look so tasty and then you add whatever you like to add on this so these are the waffles here you can see they're thicker now if you want to be like yankee you add in maple syrup but if you want to be like a floridian you add in bona fide genuine cane syrup. This is actually made and um, we purchase it locally at a historic cracker farm every year. They actually grow their own cane sugar and then make their own cane syrup just like they did in the olden days. And it's super cool. We stock it for the year. So if you never tried real cane syrup, you should. And if I can find a link for real cane syrup, I will link that down below. Or you just got to come to Florida and get you some. All right, there we go. We slather this all up. Go ahead and turn this off. So, so good. Let's try this here. Mm. Very, very good. Again, you can add fruit on top, some whipped cream if you really want to be fancy. <laughs> Um, I mean, there's the sky's the limit of what you can do with waffles. So there you go. Oops, that was really good. Gonna have another bite in just a minute, but hopefully this video was helpful for you. Again, printable recipe down below. Just go to grainsandgrit.com slash PhD 
to shop at Pleasant Hill Grain for your waffle iron, which you're going to need for this recipe. And if you don't have a mixer or a grain mill or anything else, that's the place to go to shop. As always, I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Happy eating, and I'll see you next week. Bye!